السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام Good morning for everyone. Hoping, inshallah, you are okay in the best of health and the iman and the taking care of yourself and your family and the community, inshallah. Uh, we'll come back uh, through online teaching. Hoping, inshallah, we can see you soon, face to face. I can see now the number is uh, 33, the total is 33. Are you still waiting for anyone? Can you hear me or not? Yes, you can. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Uh, the slides is is uh, is okay for you now? Yes. Okay, that's good. So let us uh, start by Umm al Kitab. <clears throat> uh, before we starting this uh, lecture about the one of the most common and the most important and the cause of of death and the complication in pediatrics, uh, the diarrhea and the dehydration. I would like to remember you that I prefer to be interactive. So I will ask you which ones you need to answer. Sometimes you need to present one slides like that, okay? So please uh, keep uh, uh, alert. <clears throat> uh, before speaking about our topic, we would like just to tell you about the clinical skills. Okay, clinical skills is uh, uh, is your most important point. Okay, and during our clinical practice, we must focus on the disease and on the patient feeling. You are not dealing with furniture or solid thing you are dealing with a human being with his own uh, feeling and ambition. So to care believe, usually you need to greet the family and introduce yourself and be sympathize with them. Even if you are hurry, you mustn't miss that important point, okay? Uh, then if you are going to good interview and the history taking, Okay, you must warn the family. No need for interruption. Try to concentrate with your patient. No need to use the mobile to do another job. Uh, keep eye to eye contact. Listen carefully to the family and to the patient. Try to be a good observer. It may be from the first time you can notice that the child looks dehydrated or unwell like that, okay? Uh, sympathize or empathize with support, and you must have uh, logic flow of your examination, okay? So during the interview to get to get the history from the patient, don't forget all, all this one, please. And every one of this is rewarding the good in your practice, and at the same time, it will reward with the doubt who choose you to be the doctor, not the patient at the time. Uh, 
while introduction conversation, you must have a different type and style. Sometimes you need to ask a direct question. What's your name, your child, your age? But many times you need to ask open questions because sometimes if the, if the patient doesn't understand your question or uh, is hurry, he may say yes or no without so try to use open question, okay? And the screening questions are very important. If you now see that this child looks like dehydrated, so there is an important point I must ask. Like, uh, what about uh, his urine? Is it normal or less than before? How many pumpers are changing? So it is very important. Uh, uncover the hidden uh, agenda. Sometimes the patient feel guilt or another type of feeling, so try to uncover it smoothly. Maybe there is uh, something wrong with the child, he eats something, I usually give him remedial medication. So try to uncover impact by a soft touch. And remember that you as a doctor, you are now in the strong position. It doesn't mean you, you, you didn't kill about the other. No excuse for the history sequences. This is a very important. For the history are leading to the patient, to the patient and they get the present, uh, the complaint and the present history, but don't forget to continue by the prenatal, natal, postnatal, what about the feeding, growth and the development, immunization, what is the previous illness, what is the functional inquiry and the family, uh, is there any social history, what about consanguinity, what about the family dynamic, all this even social issue like uh, recreation, like uh, any substance abuse, any marital stability, what about the income, all this must be included in your history because all this will affect the patient and will affect your management. So please, no excuse to go the sequences, okay? And no excuse during the examination to do your job completely also. Uh, an important point during our practice, uh, don't equivocate or qualify reassurance when you are trying to ease the parent anxiety. It's an important point. Sometimes you are not sure if this one has like severe disease or malignancy or whatever serious condition. So don't try to tell them everything is okay, don't worry, it is not enough. It is enough to, to tell them, don't worry, mom, we are waiting for the investigation hoping everything will be okay. So you must be honest, clear, but sympathize with the patient. It doesn't mean I am honest, so I will carry the diagnosis and give it in the face of the patient or the family. Your baby are so critical, I think he cannot, no, it is not allowed. Uh, can you understand me? Yes. Uh, the top, especially if you are still young and still remembering to, to put the name and the gender uh, of the patient. Of course, your dressing are very important to put the respect <coughs> of the family. You must a uh, good dressing. Also, your speech must be as much as uh, clear and confident and sympathize. Then, we will come to the two important art. The first art is the art of differential diagnosis. I mean, this patient has diarrhea or gastroenteritis, okay? Even if it is just gastroenteritis, which is so clear, but it may be has more details, like is it parenteral diarrhea or enteral diarrhea? Okay, so I would like to, to know, is it uh, the cause of the diarrhea, is it uh, infected or non-infected? So uh, in differential diagnosis, even for the disease itself or for the diagnosis itself are very important. And if you are going to give the patient 
bad news please try to like islam said in al hasanat you have the sayyat if you put something good beside something bad it can neutralize it it is the same try to search a good news to tell them your baby has severe dehydration but hopefully you came you didn't more late than that we are going to start i will flow on the spot hoping you will respond and will be okay so even if you have bad news you must try to good uh, good news beside it your patient has this serious disease but hopefully we has a treatment of that patient and the many patient can cure like that so is it clear this one your clinical skills yes please i need you to remember this one and don't forget okay the second thing is this equipment for examination must be in your bag for everything even if you are trying to do developmental assessment like that it is very important okay so this is your own responsibility must be in your hand especially for developmental assessment if you need and don't forget that simple very small toys in your hand can sit in any child you are examining and they make your life more easy how to look professionalism okay <clears throat> so number one your appearance number number two your manner and addressing the patient must be very soft to touch allah said waqulu lin nas husnan you must say the best word because the best word is the best reward for you uh, your attitude must be kind not aggressive not attacking even there is something you will you will see in many times in your life it may be even a child abuse you are not allowed to to shout on them who are you are doing that no just keep quiet your job must be done optimally and there will be after that social worker and the police to handle this issue it is not your job so please try to keep kind attitude don't let the guilt of the family make a barrier between you and the management of the baby your responsibility must be to pop you are responsible until you give the baby and really i am advising you from my heart <clears throat> you you have now about 1000 day to learn medicine and after that you are going to to be a doctor and a practicing if a small baby came to you consider him his own child if you saw patient in your same of your age consider him your brother and if elder than that consider him as a mother or a father or uncle or aunt it is very important and deal with people like that because uh, it is very dangerous not to be uh, sympathized with the patient the most important to be confident also you must your flow and you must be confident but don't over confident please and the most important way to be confident is the knowledge and the good clinical skills pushing your hand or hand rub okay uh, is a very important okay a patient uh, tired to weekly when asked to sit up lie down like that so please try to be sympathize and do your job once and then ask him to change your position he may be a bit sick and don't the patient should make made as comfort as possible during the examination okay and you must ask him any time if you are going to touch him does it hurt you or not like today we are going to exam the abdomen we need to to check the liver and the spleen and you know to check the liver and the spleen you must start from right iliac fossa and come up in the same level to palpate the liver and then from the right iliac fossa you are going to direct into the the spleen it is sometimes if you are not keen to see if the patient has been or not you must ask him and also you must look at his face if he has any pain or not okay 
exposure of the of the patient are important, but take care about the dignity of the patient, either especially if it is adolescent. Dignity are very important. During physical examination uh, of the abdomen, like our case today, you must stand to the right side. This is the standard, okay? And the exam with your right hand, and you must have systematized manner, okay? You must do proper exposure, exposing, but exposing uh, the only area that you are going to exam at that time, <clears throat> okay? Uh, caring for the patient, the privacy or dignity are very important. The examiner, uh, if you are going to exam, try to continue rapport with the baby, speaking with the baby, abakabar, how are you, how are you, which grade are you, like that. It is very important, okay? Showing the care to his disease, so you must be reactive and have some feeling. And if the patient or the family ask, you must ask, uh, answer them properly. Check for any asymmetry. This is a very important. If you see any patient, you must be a good observer. Okay, asymmetry in both sides of the body, okay, is a very important also. <clears throat> Then your patient, you must be a good observer, okay? You must ask yourself a mini question. If this patient looks well or ill, maybe your patient today are severely dehydrated. So you'll find him, his eye is sunken and he looks very fatigued or irritable like that. He looks uh, sick or not. What about he is dysmorphic or not? It may be the patient down and came with gastroenteritis. So you must take care because you have two diagnoses now. What about his nutritional status? He is growing well or unwell like that. Okay, he is alert or grooming is very important because if the patient has a bad, a bad uh, sensorium or like that, he may in coma, so don't miss it. Don't sit, he is sleeping. You must take care about them, okay? Uh, and ask yourself about his uh, comfortable or not. He may have a pain. And uh, what about he is distressed or not? He, he looks like acute or chronic illness. It may be the patient came with cerebral palsy in uh, wheelchair. And you can find him is a chronic patient, but come with another problem like gastroenteritis, pneumonia, or whatever. Okay. So here we must check about the sunken eye, the loose skin like that. Does the patient appear clean or not is very important. Is about the care because we have, you must put in your mind that a child abuse can be started from the neglect. This is the number level one of a child abuse. It is neglect the child appearance doesn't well, his clothes are not clean. It is very important, okay? You must check if the child looks irritable, biting his nail or like that, it is very important. The answer to the question may provide useful information about the patient, self-esteem and the mental status, okay? If you're asking the same question, try to see how he looks at his self-esteem and the mental status. Of course, we are not examining the patient, but we are trying to uh, evaluate the situation, okay? Posture of the patient is very important, okay? The most uh, important one, like patient of cerebral palsy, you will find the patient has like a spastic quadriplegia. All four limbs are spastic. The patient who is heart failure, he may have orthopnea, he cannot sleep like that. So after observation, please, you are going now for the first step of the examination of the baby. Okay, after general survey, you must uh, check, make sure that the room is comfortable and use a good lightning, uh, observe before touch and completely expose the part you need to examine. Don't forget this one, please. Okay, uh, after that, 
during the examination, you must start by the peripheral before central. I mean, any patient you are going to see, start by the hand and check if the patient has clubbing the cyanosis or whatever, and then check for the vital signs, including the pulse and the blood pressure and the respiratory rate, and then come up for the head, for the eye, for the mouth, for the neck, like this, and then go to the gastrointestinal tract, okay? This is a routine one which must be done. Uh, if we come now to our uh, gastroenteritis, most common case, we will find that the gastroenteritis is the, uh, one of the most important causes of death among the children under five years. You can find here that neonatology, okay, here is both uh, neonatal, you can find many infection, but if you come, you will find the gastroenteritis as they are about 9% from that. Okay? Of course, neonates is taking about 50% from the other side. So it is very important to know what is the most important cases which can affect the children. You will find here pneumonia, you will find the diarrhea and the gastroenteritis, and then you will find another condition, but con congenital one also, injuries, HIV, malaria, measles, all this can be defined as the causes of death among children. Yes. Now the diarrhea is the increase in the fluidity the volume and the frequency of the stool. Acute diarrhea, any disease you must ask yourself, is it acute or chronic? And it's a disease has its own criteria to define is it acute or chronic. So if it's short, I mean less than two weeks, it is acute. If it is more than two weeks, it is chronic diarrhea and it has a different, completely different pathway, okay, because uh, it, it may be something serious, like inflammatory bowel disease, like malabsorption. But also the acute diarrhea, yes, it is not maybe not so serious infection or non-infected, but the most important here is the dehydration. Is the dehydration which can occur with the acute diarrhea. Types of diarrhea, it may be acute watery diarrhea, okay? which can be accompanied by dehydration and malnutrition. It can be dysentery, okay? It will be accompanied by anorexia, weight loss, damage to the mucosa. It may be persistent. I mean, persistent just uh, between the two to three weeks, okay? It can be accompanied by dehydration and malnutrition. So we have acute watery, we have dysentery. Anyone knows what is dysentery? <laughs> bloody stool. Sorry? Bloody stool. Is it enough? Bloody stool alone is, uh, is dysentery. So any patient to have bile, he will diagnose him as dysentery? Bloody diarrhea. No, it is blood and the mucus and the tenismus. There must be some mucus also and the penismus. We will go for that. So it is not blood. It may be blood. Blood stool may be differentiated into, in, into either surgical or non surgical. If you came to us, it is very uh, important uh, for bloody diarrhea. It may be mucus diverticulum like that. But for dysentery, as a dysentery, it is, uh, must be mucus with it. Okay? So now we can understand that the acute diarrhea, prolonged one, okay, sometimes be resistant and turn it to be chronic according to the, everyone has its own causes. So let us see now, diarrhea can be infectious or non-infectious, okay? The infectious one can be enteral or parenteral. <clears throat> what is the difference between enteral and parenteral? 
parental involved the gut. So parental is outside the gut. Yes, uh, I mean this is a part of systemic disease. Okay, an important example beside the written here, like otitis media, pneumonia, UTI, like dengue fever. Dengue fever can cause diarrhea, vomiting, and diarrhea and abdominal pain as a part of the warning signs. So it is very important to, to consider that. Is it the problem is the intestine or systemic one? If the intestine, it can be either viral, which is the most common, especially in infant and toddler, toddlers, uh, like enteroviral, adenoviral, and the most important one is the rotaviral. It may be bacteria. You must know the bacteria, which is cholera, salmonella, escherichia coli, shigella. Even some of this one can cause some blood. Still, it is not dysentery, okay? Dysentery will be coming from parasites, like Intaniba histolytica, Gardia lambilia, like that, okay? So number one, is it infectious diarrhea? Yes. Is it a problem in the intestine only? So I must be able to answer it is viral, bacterial, or uh, parasitic. And an important differential diagnosis here is the food poisoning. Just to admit, two brother and the sister, they went to some restaurant and ate and started to get a vomiting, the resistant to vomiting like that. And no other family member has the problem and no one eat and they So we must suspect the food poisoning because it is a notifiable disease. Okay. Number two for, from the infection, as, as we speak, it may be a part of the generalized. Don't forget, this is a two important causes, which is the otitis media, pneumonia, and the UTI. Okay. Pneumonia can cause also because it can irritate the diaphragm and the cause like abdominal pain and the vomiting. Also, the, the, same, the same condition with otitis media can cause also vomiting and the fever and sometimes causing the diarrhea. UTI in many in small children may be presented by the same also vomiting and the loose stool. So now we understood now what is the infection. It is not just general word, it can be enteral or parenteral, okay? And even it can be food poisoning, it must be rolled out. There is also non-infectious cause, which is malabsorption, like cystic fibrosis, like many cases of malabsorption syndrome. Sometimes it is lactose intolerance or cow's milk allergy. All this can cause diarrhea. So for the First minute, when I see the patient who is diarrhea, it must be my mind now is making like a trip with infectious or non-infectious. If it is non-infection, what can be? And at the same time, if it is infection, it is intral or parenteral. Is it food poisoning or just like that? And all this, we must go and ask ourselves after that, what about the chronic diarrhea? What can be the cause? if it is chronic, okay? This is why you are arranging your capability to pick because not in every day you must see one patient who is gastroenteritis, but you must be able to define is it a viral, it is a bacterial, it is a parasitic, it is a part of systemic disease, is it a food poisoning, is it a malabsorption or lactose intolerance or cow milk or it is a chronic diarrhea. So you must be very clear. Also can be dysentery like that. Again, as we spoke before, after introduce yourself and a good, a good rapport with the family, and then you are going to physical examination and then investigation, and lastly, the decision for treatment. The most important here, History taking will give you uh, an important bulk of the knowledge, maybe up to 70% you can collect by the history. Your physical examination, it will give you about 25% of the knowledge to confirm your uh, differential diagnosis and the like that. Investigation also will help, but it is the lowest 
size. It may be five to 10% maximum. If you try to invert any patient to come to you, do investigation and the delay physical examination and history, you will lose your clinical skills. So you must be a good listener, a good observer, a good examiner, and then after that you will select the investigation you need to do. And for any investigation, you must be able to answer what is the benefit of this investigation? Why I am doing that one? What is the rationale of doing it? Okay. So the history taking, as we spoke before, you must have it is very important. The chief complaint here, you will ask the onset, the duration, the frequency, the volume, the nature. Okay. Is it secretory diarrhea or osmotic diarrhea? <clears throat> Secretory diarrhea is, is a very dangerous one, okay? It means even if you make the patient NBM, okay, and fasting, it will still pass. It can occur with severe causes like cholera and other. Osmotic diarrhea is stop with fasting. Dysentery, we have blood, blood mucus and the pus. Steatorrhea, you will find that there is a lot of fat in the stool, which make it bad and greasy and bumpy uh, and the bone deformed, usually in these cases of malabsorption. So even from concentrating from the history about the uh, nature of the diarrhea, you can put initial, initial suspicions. Okay, is it secretory or osmotic? Is it dysentery or steatorrhea? Okay, the rule of surveying, you must know the frequency, the volume, the consistency, the color, the odor, the blood, the mucus. Must go all through this one. Sometimes the, fa the family will not offer you the knowledge until you ask. This is the Bristol stool chart, and for every patient, you must be able to see what score. Okay. From the first two, it looks like uh, constipating, then this one looks normal, and then this is starting with the area, okay, until the next one. So you must answer how is the Bristol stool chart. What is the complication of the diarrhea? Number one, dehydration. And the, as I told you before, there's many people have a chronic disease like inflammatory bowel disease or whatever. They need to go to the toilet many times more than normal, okay? So it, it doesn't, uh, usually they are not susceptible to infection, but they are susceptible to malnutrition, but for the patient with acute diarrhea, that the, the body composition contain more water, up to 85-90% water. So if he lose acute diarrhea, it will be very dangerous for, for the area. So you must ask, what about his rest disease? Could you very thirsty? Is irritable restlessness or lethargic or not? What is the level of consciousness? very important and the urine outbook urine outbook because remember that one of the complication of the hydration is acute kidney injury and it will appear by decrease the urine usually uh, the urine outbook must be at least one ml per kilo per hour okay so if it is decreased take care because the kidney may be affected Initially, the patient can put very renal failure. And if you didn't manage him properly, he can put the uh, permanent renal failure. Okay? Uh, malnutrition, he may lose weight and failure to thrive. And the good specific symptoms of vitamin malnutrition and like that. Others, 
is there any dysentery? Is there any electrolyte imbalance? These are very important. So all this one is the suspected complication, either dehydration, either malnutrition, either electrolyte imbalance are very important. And of course, all these babies after gastroenteritis looks like sick, and the most of them are susceptible to what like pneumonia or schist infection. You can see here the baby is a bit lethargic. The, the, the upper uh, photo, the lower one also is bigish and he has distended abdomen and looks malnutrition. So you must take care about that. Other history, for the past medical history, you must ask about the, any medication like antibiotics. Some antibiotics can cause diarrhea, especially amoxicillin cannabinoic acid. Okay. Uh, is there any history of bowel operation? You may suspect uh, some disease known as short bowel syndrome or like that, so you will be susceptible for, for diarrhea. Uh, what about the feeding? Is it a pressed feeding? Is the mom washing her hand and uh, cleaning her uh, chest, uh, breast before feeding or not? If it is bottle, how is the mother preparing the food and the sterility? Okay. And we must ask if there are any food allergy, especially to, uh, to the egg, to the seafood like that. Okay. We must ask about the family. Is there any similar presentation among the family members who so are suspecting the either infective or food poisoning? What is there any history of chronic disease like inflammatory bowel disease or cystic fibrosis or whatever? Okay. Social. Uh, he is in uh, in centers, daycare center or school. We must ask if there any other candidate has the same problem or not. Okay. What about the water supply and the sewage disposable? Because all this will affect the general health. For the physical examination, from the first impression and observation, he is conscious or not, is lethargic or weak, pale or jaundice. What about any lymph nodes, signs of malnutrition, signs of anemia? and then go for the anthropometry, which is the high food and the head circumference, and the check he is crossing the centile, I mean he is dropping it down in the centile, and after that the vital signs, don't forget that the vital signs are vital. Assess the hydration status, very important, you will see the table, and then go for the abdomen, okay? If you are going to examine the abdomen, you must also start by inspection, palpation, which is superficial and then deep uh, uh, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Uh, as you see, the peristaltic movement will be increased. So don't forget to sculptate the abdomen and count the peristalsis. Normally, it is just three to five to six like that per minute. And to check if there is any scar, if there is any abdominal distension. During the palpation, don't forget to check if there is any tenderness or rigidity. Okay. Uh, the rectal examination, if you Check that area, especially in the small baby, you can find the excretion at the very anal area. You can see that if there is any hematopsia or any infestation, okay, or any infection, it is uh, most important, but after taking the permission. Here is the hydration status, okay. We have these parameters are very, very important, and it will help you to say, is it mild? or moderate or severe. So the general appearance he is still alert and well, or he is drowsy and coma. Anterior fentanyl are very important. Remember that the anterior fentanyl 
are closing from the six months until 18 months, and sometimes it may be delayed in some uh, toddlers. So is it normal or sunken or very sunken? And they then go for the eye. So you must be able to check the hydration status from head to toe like that. Then go for the eye. Is it sunken or not? And to go for the tear is very important. If it is reduced or absent, it means the child is crying and crying and crying and no tears. It means his body has no enough fluids, okay? What about his thrist? If he has no thrist or very thirsty, or sometimes he became refused to food, which is a very severe one. What about the mucous membrane? Is it moist or dry? What about the pulse? Is it normal or rabid? Okay, but with, with time it may be weak. Okay, what about the respiration? Normal or cosmal breathing? What's cosmal breathing? Anyone knows? Hmm? Deep, heavy breathing. Sorry? A deep, heavy breathing. Yes. Deep. Rapid breathing, which means that the patient now got like metabolic acidosis. Okay, the blood pressure it will be start uh, normal, but it may be slightly decreased. But if you start to to very 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 decreasing, okay, it is very dangerous. Why? We must know one of the most common complications of diarrhea is the dehydration, and the dehydration can cause shock. And the shock has two types. One is uh, compensated and the other one is uncompensated. Okay? So compensated or uncompensated, it depends on mainly on the blood pressure and the pulse. Okay? Capillary refill time are very important. Skin turgidity, it is very important to see is it reduced or very prolonged. And urine output, don't forget which is diminished or not, and what about the concentration, or the patient that has marked oliguria, which is an ominous science. Of course, don't forget the first time, which is the parameters, less than 3%. I mean 3% of the body weight. So don't forget the weight up here, okay? So weighing of the child, especially if you have recent record, it will also guide us to the severity. Give the same presentation again, okay, about the, the time of the dehydration. Remember that sometimes the, this percentage is different between ages, a small age, it can be like this, 5, 10, uh, 5, 10 and the more. Uh, in slightly older, it can sometimes be less than that, like 4, 7, okay? So again, if you ask him how to assess the dehydration status of the any infant or children, you must go systematize as we speak before. You see this picture are very informative about the fontanel, about the eyes, about the mouth, about uh, even the neck for the jugular vein and the pulsation, okay, and then capillary within time, of course, the pulse, of course, the blood pressure, okay, and then the chest, is it the kidney or not, or then the skin tear and the oligoria, and on top, besides the sunken fontanel, is there any disturbed sensorium or not? With the severe one, you find the bit lethargic and loss of consciousness. So we did now detail the history, introduction, observation, and then history, and then examination. So the investigation, it is not a must to be done for every case, especially if it is so mild, but if the patient needs like admission and, uh, and they look sick, so we consider the following investigation. Number one, the food blood counts, okay? 
and I need one of you, please write a simple revision how to read the full blood count. Full blood count are full of knowledge and the benefits. Okay. So who can do it and send it to me to just revise and then send it to the old batch which said I am be the one. Should I choose or someone need to send I am? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, anyone? What was the question again, Doctor? How to read the full blood counts and peripheral blood filling, or how to interpret? Okay, uh, Anis Amira. Are you there? Yes, doctor. Please do it. Uh, for full blood count, uh, and, you can check the... And the peripheral blood film, how to interpret? Uh, I need to explain here. Yeah. Uh, no, just oh. do it as uh, a simple reference and write it. And then we revise and give it to the old group under your name, okay? Okay. Uh, how long it will take from you? Uh, um, one day, I guess. Sorry? Uh, uh, today, I will send it to you tomorrow. Yeah, okay, three days for you, please. Three days. Try to make it more informative because really, really, it is a full of information, okay? Okay. Okay, so, uh, the full blood count, okay. Don't forget that it can you can comment on the hemoglobin in the white cell count in the platelet count, okay, and the all parameters inside that. The renal profile are very important, of course, because this is the most uh, organ will be affected. We may find the patient start to get increase the renal profile. It means the patient has very renal. If you lift him without fluids, we may in, uh, turn it to renal uh, injury. Okay. Then, where with dehydration, urea and it can be affected. The most important is the electrolyte. What is the most important electrolyte can be affected? Sodium. Yes, sodium and the potassium. Okay, sodium, uh, even we are differentiating the diarrhea into three types, hypotonic, isotonic, or hypertonic, okay? And the management is different. We cannot give all of them the same types and uh, fluids. So it is isotonic, we are going for the normal one. If it is hypotonic, we need to increase the sodium content. If it is hypertonic, Take care, you are not allowed to correct the hypertonic or the hyper, uh, the increased sodium in the blood rapidly because it can cause brain lysis. The other one is the potassium. Potassium are very important as a guide for the, uh, sometimes it's, if it is very low, it can cause like paralysis, uh, paralytic ileus and the child has distended abdomen and the resistant to vomiting and they can, cannot tolerate. So it is very important to also the potassium. Of course, culture and sensitivity, okay, can be requested. The blood gas, if the patient looks severely dehydrated 
or as personal grazing, I must do the blood gas, which is very important. Stool investigation for microscopy and gram stain, okay, for leukocyte ova and the cysts are very important to rule out any dysentery or any infection. Stool culture, it may guide us in case of dysentery or severe dehydration or chronic ill or immune compromised or the patient looks toxic. Stool BH, okay, are very important for its reducing the substance if you are suspecting the malabsorption, okay, or lactase intolerance. 72 hours of fecal fat is very important in uh, cases like cystic fibrosis and the malabsorption. For chronic cases, we may need colonoscopy, yes. Other, yes, if I suspect this is parenteral diarrhea secondary to UTI, I will do UFMA, okay? If I suspect it is secondary to like dengue, I may need to dengue if it is fever and diarrhea. So it depends on the expected situation. Others, okay? Here is the most important, the difference between the, the three types of dehydration. Is it isotonic, hypertonic, or hypotonic? Okay, the most uh, common one is the isotonic, but don't forget that the other, you can see them about 30% of the cases. Okay, uh, here is the relation between the sodium. It is the plasma osmolarity, which will be in high bar, it will be increased. Serum sodium, of course, it is depend on it. So you will find in the eyes of normal, here is high. The thirst are present more in the high bar, okay? Uh, loss of skin terror are more clear in the isotonic, but no loss in hypertonic. Even the skin terror will be kept, and even the tongue, you will find him like woody, like wood, not so other, but it is more clear in hypotonic. Cigar, is very common also in the hypertonic. Mental status, it may be very irritable also in hypertonic. Shock is common in the hyponatremic more than the other two, unless it is severe. So please take care about the sodium level and the need to adjust your IV flow. So the diagnosis, we are going to speak about, is it acute or chronic? What about the hydration states? What about the etiology? Is there any complication? Is there any con concomitant illness? Does it affect the growth and the development of mothers? Okay. All this while we are informing the diagnosis must be able to answer that one. It is acute, infective, gastroenteritis with moderate dehydration. So I know now it is uh, acute and it is infective and it is complicated by moderate dehydration. Uh, there is no another problem with the growth and the development. So my diagnosis will be completed like that. Treatment uh, fluids because the patient are losing the fluid, but this cannot be water because the patient either vomiting or diarrhea is passing the water and the electrolyte. So. The best is the oral rehydration therapy, also dietary therapy. Sometimes we need to add zinc or antimicrobial. So we are going to define, is it mild or moderate or severe for the management? It is the general condition, if well, we will put him in plan A. Okay, if it is moderate, we have plan B. If it is severe, we have plan C. So we are going to assess his ABC. What is ABC? Airway, breathing, circulation. circulation. Very good. And then watch for hypovolemic shock is very important. And then is going to do resuscitation, mainly to treatment the dehydration. 
So in the degree of dehydration, if it is mild, the plan A, just maybe treat at home, give extra fluid until the diarrhea and to continue feeding. Advice when to return it. This is the most important. If you're discharging the any patient, give him enough knowledge to take the decision. If he become more sick, if he develop fever, if he got blood in the stool, if he cannot uh, even suck or drink, or you must come back. Okay. Home available fluids, we can recommend some uh, like lemon water, rice. Okay, but other not recommended. Okay, but for me the top is the uh, ORS. Okay, but we mean here don't give plain water and don't give him some fluids that can increase. Okay, the diarrhea. The Electrolyte composition of the diarrhea. This is a very important to know how much the patient loss in the sodium potassium like that, especially in uh, secretory and osmotic one. Okay, and then from that analysis, we can go to how much is the composition of the ORS, especially the revised one by the uh, WHO. So we need to put sodium about 75 percent, potassium 20, uh, 75, the potassium is 20, the chloride is 65, the bicarb is 10, like that. So that's why the ORS is developed like that. Even in some area uh, where there is a shortage of resources, you can ask them just to, to put uh, one liter of water with one spoon of sugar and a half a spoon of salt will cause a good effect. It can offer some of this electrolytes. This is the basophysiology. You just finished your uh, basic medical science. Okay. So you will find the issue with uh, intestinal fluid, sodium, potassium, and chloride, and the chain to come out to the lumen, and what will happen with the microvilli, okay? So can, now we can differentiate between the secretory and the cosmetic barrier. Okay, is it clear now? The difference between inflammatory, the osmotic, the secretory, and even the motility abnormality of the ducts. The management, we have the, if it is mild, we say just increase the fluid intake and educate the patient. If it is moderate, we are going to give ORS from 50 to 75 ml per kilo per motion, okay? You are going to calculate the ORS over a four hour. Don't push to drink a very big amount in a short time because uh, the intestine cannot tolerate and they may vomit. Okay, like if the patient has, this is roughly calculated less than 60 kilo, I'm going to give him between 200 and 400. If he, at this age, you can give 400 to 700 like that, according to the period and severity of the diarrhea. And then they assess and they classify the child for the dehydration. Is it continuous with appropriate plan or explain three rules which is extra fluid and continue feeding and the whole to return.
don't forget that breastfeeding will not stop during the gastrointestinal tracts. When to use IV fluid if it is severe and the patient's sensorium are not good, uh, he has very rapid stool loss or frequency severe and vomiting and the drinking poorly, abdomen is distended, uh, distended and the glucose uh, malabsorption. And sometimes social situation, like if you got one like orang asli and you are afraid, you can admit and try to to manage him before leaving. The blancy, it must be quickly, admit the patient and the treat as soon as possible by intravenous uh, fluid, which is a polus 20 ml per kilo, a normal saline or ringers, okay? And reassess after every polus and stop the polus once the fusion improved and give the remainder IV fluid, okay? The amount of the total fluid you need to give to the patient is the, uh, the deficit and the maintenance. Okay, so you must calculate the maintenance and the deficit and give it to this in that sequence. Like to see now the fluid, the fluid deficient is the percentage of dehydration in the body weight. And the maintenance, we are calculating it before six months, we are giving 150. Six months to one year, we are giving 120. More than one year, according to the weight. Okay, just you must know that in the first 10 kilos, we are giving 100 ml per kilo. Then the second 10 kilos, you are giving 500, 5 ml per kilo. And after that, it is 20 ml per kilo. It is very important to calculate all this and give it to the patient as we are discussing after that. Of course, if you have underlying cause like infected diarrhea, like dysentery, like malabsorption, all this must be treated. Okay. So uh, remember that the gastroenteritis in many situations is the acute and the self-limited illness. Diarrhea and vomiting in infancy and childhood is usually due to viral. And remember that the most common viral is rotavirus. And we have now extra vaccine for rotavirus. Do you know it? Rotarix or another brand it is very important. And it must be given from the six week. It is oral vaccination given twice and do not given after the six months, okay? So uh, remember that we have vaccination for this diarrhea uh, of rotavirus. Also, there is some vaccination against some diarrhea like typhoid, like cholera. There is also vaccination. Fluid replacement, how to replace it? Is it either by the ORS or IV fluid according to the severity? What about the breastfeeding should be continued, but formula feed should cease until recovery, antibiotic, and the anti-emetics agent are contraindicated as a routine. But sometimes you may need it as uh, in some situation, but not given for all the patient, okay? The, the most important sometimes if the patient has lactose deficiency, you need to consider lactose-free formula, okay? Did you understand this one, how to calculate the deficit and the maintenance? Is it clear? Maybe okay. you can uh, try. Sorry. Sorry. Can you can you repeat it one more time, doctor? Yes. The most important to calculate the deficit of the fluid now. Normally, if any child came to you and asked you need to give him like IV fluid or to calculate the amount, you will calculate. In the first less than six months, you are giving 150 ml per kilo. Suppose the patient 
are four months and six kilos. So how much you are giving him now? For the maintenance? If it's, if it's for six months, then he's how many kilos? Five kilos. Five kilos. Then that would be 750 milliliter okay. per day. And do we now suspect that he is dehydrated 10%? 75 ml. Sorry? Ten percent, fifty. Um, is ten percent dehydrated five kg fifty. Uh, fifty. If he is ten percent dehydrated, he is. The baby is ever percent dehydrated, right? Isn't it become a uh, seventy five M meal? Eh, who can answer? Um, doctor, yes, seventy five milliliter, right? The baby is, um, 10% dehydrated, dehydrated, so 10% times oh, the body. No. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Good. I'm asking you for that. Please, uh, Dr. Nadia, uh, uh, you said body weight 5 kilo, right? Yes. Uh, and the dehydration is 10%. Uh, yes. So, uh, five kilo we convert to gram, eh? Five thousand mm -hmm. gram, and we got ten percent. It's about five hundred ml. Yes, that's why I am giving you also two instructions, please. Uh, okay, the first one you have in your timetable the time of lecture which are going to go. You must prepare. Now we are studying online, not face to face. You must prepare before coming. Today you know that I'm going to give you a lecture in diarrhea and dehydration. You must read. You must open our pediatric protocol or our up-to-date or whatever uh, source you need to go through it. And you mustn't start from zero point on the uh, lecture for me and for other lecturer, please. It is an important point. You must read in advance to try to decrease the gap between stay at home for safety and go and become also competent doctor. Okay, this is number one. Number two, will I, I need two or three of you make scenario of the calculation of the amount of IV fluid and how we compensate it over 24 hours or more, okay? And send it to the group, to, to me, to adjust to be for the group, okay? Am I clear? Uh, who is the group representative? Uh, me, doctor. Uh, sorry, are you repeat the, the instruction? Huh? Can you repeat the instruction? Okay. Uh, you are uh, Zulu Akkar? Yes. Are you? Okay. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. Uh, I need to repeat how to manage the intravenous. Uh, fluid deficit during the severe gastroenteritis. Okay, how to calculate it and give many examples. 
okay i mean if it is iso or it is hypo or it is hyper osmolar okay and you will uh, collect from your colleague okay this one point and the other point how to interpret the full blood count and the peripheral blood film and it's important for diagnosis of diseases and send it to my whatsapp to correct and then they adjust and send it to the group after that okay okay so now we understand that this child in the state of he needs just 750 ml per day. He need now 125 ml per day, and we need to check after boluses. If, if he need bolus, we are going to deduct. If he doesn't need, how can we divide it over the 24 hour? Okay, this is a, a very important. Okay. Uh, we are going to also, I would uh, would like to discuss with you the uh, clinical examination after that, inshallah, after we finish this uh, points. Okay? Okay. Thank, you. okay. Thank you, everyone. And I hope uh, to see you again soon, inshallah, and waiting. Uh, you have the uh, maximum two to three days to, to finish that issue, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.